In this video, we're going to look at how to create and use functions in JavaScript. In programming, a function is a section of code in a program that is given a name and performs a specific task. And functions can be reused throughout a program. So if there's a section of code that you've written that performs some kind of specific task, and you might want to reuse that code throughout the program, you don't need to keep rewriting that code um, anytime you want to perform that task in the program. Uh, that would be a waste of time. What you can do is put that code into a function. Uh, so you can define a function, you can give it a name, and then you can just call that code again or reuse that code again in your program by um, saying the name of that function, by calling the function. So functions can do a few different things. They can, uh, depending on how we define them, a function can um, perform some kind of task and uh, can return uh, or perform some operation and return a value to the program or back to the, the code where that function was called. Um, or a function can just perform an operation or some kind of task but not return any value. And we'll look at what that means in just a moment with some examples. Functions can also um, just work on their own. They can just perform a task um, and, and then uh, the rest of the program continues running. Um, or they can uh, take in some information um, that's passed into the function. So um, variables or values, bits of data that are passed into the function and use them into the function. So there are a few different ways that we can write functions in our code. And we're going to look at the different ways that we can do it. So uh, in this example, what we're going to do is just um, we'll display an alert message on the screen and we'll look at how we can um, Re put that code into a function and reuse that function. So to create a function, we just use the keyword function. All right, similar to how if we were creating a variable, we'd use the keyword var. Uh, then we give the function a name. So as I said, this, um, this code that we're going to write, it's just going to be simple for this example. We'll just display a message on the screen and, and that will be it for now. So I'll give this function a unique, a unique name. I'm going to call it same message. Then we follow it by some a pair of uh, parentheses. Now, we'll look at what these parentheses are used for in, in a moment. Um, basically, what you can put in between these parentheses is uh, uh, values, uh, so data, uh, which might just be um, some information or it might um, be information that's stored in a variable that we want to pass into the function and, and use within the function. So we maybe want some code to, to use uh, that information um, whenever the function is used. Or you can leave these um, parentheses empty if there's nothing that you want to pass in. Those are called, uh, whatever you put in between the, those parentheses, they're called parameters. And we'll look at that shortly, but for the moment, we'll just leave these um, parentheses empty. We won't put anything in there. Then we use some curly brackets, a pair of those, and um, all of the code that's going to belong to this function, that's gonna be part of the function uh, definition, is contained within those curly um, braces. So uh, we could have, you know, one instruction. We could just say something like, you know, we could use an alert message just to test this out and see how it works. Um, we could have one instruction, or we could have a few instructions uh, on a few lines of code uh, in this function definition. Functions should be written uh, in a way that they just perform one specific task, so they can be reused in lots of different situations. But we'll look at that. Um, more later as so. well. So this is this is a function definition. We've said create a function. We've given it a name so that we can, um, whenever we want to use this code in the function again, we can just call it by its name. And then uh, in these between these curly brackets, we've added the code that we want to run whenever we use this function. So now to use this function, all we need to do is call it. If I was going to save this code and go to the page and refresh it, nothing happens and that's because the function has been defined and the code that we want to run in the function but we haven't actually called it yet we haven't used the function yet so to use it we just call the function by its name and um, make sure that you put in the parentheses there just like we did when we created it and now if we save the code and run that um, page we can see the little hello world message uh, from the function that code that's in the function. And we can call functions as many times as we want. So 
This is quite a simple example. We only have one line of code in this function, but a function might be more complex. It might um, you know, perform some kind of mathematical calculation or formula uh, or perform some kind of operation and then um, return a result or display a result. Uh, and we might want to maybe use that code at different points in the program. We might want to repeat those instructions or reuse those instructions sometimes. So we can save time. We wouldn't have to keep rewriting that code over and over again every time we want those instructions carried out. We can just call the function by its name. So if I wanted to reuse this code again later in the program, I can just call it by its name again. So now I've called it twice. If I refresh the page, we see the hello world message once, click OK and then we see it again a second time. So it's repeated this instruction twice. As I said, it's a simple one line instruction, but there could be multiple lines of code in here. There could be 10 lines of code in there, 20 lines of code, and calling the function by its name would uh, run all of those lines of code in one go. Okay, so that's an example of um, creating a function without parameters. Uh, so that means nothing in these parentheses here. Now we're going to look at an example of um, creating a message, that, uh, creating a, a function that does have parameters. So a parameter is um, a, a value that can be we, um, used within a function. All right. So for example, let's say uh, I want to have a function. It's called say message, and I want it to alert, display an alert message on the screen, and um, I don't necessarily want that alert message to be um, hard-coded into the function. I might want to um, display a different message uh, every time I use the function. So what I can do is um, specify parameters. And we'll start by just specifying one parameter, and we'll look at an example of specifying more. All right, so I'm just going to call the parameter message. So you give it a unique name, like you would a variable. So they're kind of like variables. And then instead of saying alert message, uh, instead of saying alert hello world, uh, within the quotation mark, so the string, I'm going to say alert message. Now, what will happen is when I call this function, I'm going to pass in a value that will um, represent the message. Uh, so it could be hello world, it could be goodbye, it could be anything. Um, that value will be passed in as a message, the parameter, and then used within the function. So now when I call this function, I can't just... Uh, leave those parentheses empty. If I was to save this code, and I'll just open up the console in Chrome here. If I was to save that code and now refresh the page, we see it says undefined. And that's because uh, nothing has been specified uh, for this message parameter when I've called the function. So what I need to do is put in a value that's going to be um, used as that message parameter. So I'm going to say, hello world. And the value that I'm passing in to use as the message for the message parameter, this is called an argument. So we're providing an argument for a parameter. All right, save the code, refresh it, and we see that hello world message. I could use this function again at another point in the program. I could display you know, a different message and say hello world, and then we say goodbye. All right, so uh, the message is no longer hard-coded into the function. We can um, use different messages by providing different arguments for the message parameter. Okay, now if we wanted to use multiple parameters, which we can, um, we just separate them by commas. So we'll look at another example with multiple parameters. I'm going to create a function that calculates the average of a set of numbers, and uh, we'll just make it three numbers. So I'll call these parameters number one, number two, and number three. So this function has three parameters that it requires, three numbers, and each parameter is given a unique name separated by commas. Then within the function code, I'm going to um, display uh, the result. So I might actually create a variable within this function, and I'll just call it result, and I'll make it equal to num1 plus num2 plus num3, and then I'll divide all of that by 3 to get the average. Then what I could do is I could alert the result on the screen so we can see it. And now when I call the function, 
there are three parameters here. So if I, again, if I left those parentheses empty, we see uh, another error this time. Instead of saying undefined, it says NAN, which means not a number. So um, it's tried to run this code here, um, but it hasn't had any numbers provided to um, calculate the average for. So I could put in a set of numbers. I'll just do 10, 15, and 12. And so 10 is going to be the argument provided for the num1 parameter. 15 is going to be the argument provided for the num2 parameter. And 12 is going to be the argument provided for the num3 parameter. So we've got two numbers here that are going to be represented as num1, num2, and num3 in the same order. Okay, save and refresh the code. And then we see the average is displayed in that alert message. And uh, also if I was to you know, um, not provide the right amount of arguments. So for example, if we have three parameters here that this function requires, but I only provide two values or two arguments for those parameters, then again, um, we're going to see uh, an error, not a number, because the, the wrong amount of arguments has been provided for the required uh, parameters there. Okay, so that's how to specify multiple parameters for a function. The last thing that we'll look at is using a return statement. So let's say that you didn't always want to display the result in uh, an alert message. Maybe sometimes you just want to store the result in a variable to use for another calculation or to use later in the program. Or you might want to display it in an alert message or you might want to display it in a console message or document.write. Well, we could make this code more um, reusable by only um, specifying you know what it needs to do um, as a basic task all it needs to do is calculate the average that's it um, we can then determine later on whether we want to display it on the screen or save it in a variable or whatever we want to do with it but we can just make it um, calculate the result and return it so we can use it however we want um, at any instance when we're using this function so rather than hard coding the alert message in the function what i'm going to do is to say return result so it's going to um, you know, calculate the average of these three numbers, store it in this variable called result, and this variable is only used within the function. Then what happens if we say return result, um, the result of calculating the average of these three numbers is returned back to the code uh, where we called the function, and we can use it in some way. So if we run the code as it is at the moment, we won't really see anything happen because we haven't specified how to use the value that's been returned. What we could do is uh, we could create a variable, we could say something like my average equals, and then it will store the result that's been returned from that function, and then maybe we can alert it or display it in the console or, um, or um, display it on the web page. Like that. So there we go, we see the average again. All right, so what's happened is um, we've called the function. We've passed in three numbers to be used for these parameters. We've calculated the result and stored the result. Then we've returned the result back to um, this line of code, line six, where the function's called to store in the variable called my average. And then we've alerted um, that. But again, we could we don't even need to use uh, store it in a variable if we don't want it to. If we didn't want to, we could alert it straight away. We could put that whole code within uh, an alert message uh, rather than storing it in a variable. Or we could just store it in a variable and not use it straight away or use it later or, or maybe um, you know document.write the result instead so we see it in the web page. So the point of using a return statement is that we can make this code just perform um, carry out the operation that needs to do perform the, the instructions that it, it needs to do and then we can do whatever we want with um, the result that's produced we can just return it so that it can be used in a number of different ways um, uh, at different points in the program not one and uh, not only be allowed to use in one specific way we might not always want to display the result we might just want to save it for later or or maybe um, you know add something to the average we might want to add another number to it or use it for another calculation or something like that. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're gonna look at how um, the variables work. So we've actually created a variable within this function.
Um, we're going to look at the difference between when you create variables outside functions and when you create them inside uh, functions. We're going to look at something called variable scope. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.